said, hey, I've got so many stories to cover that I just had to do a talking head video. I mean, we're talking a response to that fake benchmark report. MSI is done with AMD GPUs, the weirdest AMD CPU release yet. All Intel reviews need to be redone. This story is huge and a massive leak on AMD's monster APU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that Qualcomm was recently accused of faking benchmarks for their new Snapdragon X Elite and Plus CPUs. That story originally came from Semi-Accurate and they quoted to, quote, major OEMs and a deep source at Qualcomm. But like I said in that video, he never really explained exactly how Qualcomm cheated. He more or less just said that they did from a supposed source at Qualcomm and two major OEMs weren't able to get anywhere near the performance. We're talking upwards of 50% of what Qualcomm stated. Well, the company themselves have responded, and as you can see, it says a Qualcomm representative sent Tom's Hardware an official comment on the matter, saying succinctly, quote, we stand behind our performance claims and are excited for consumers to get their hands on Snapdragon X Lead and X Plus devices soon. So yeah, they basically said, uh, these aren't true. And I'm obviously not sure which it is, but I will say this. Sure, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA in the past have absolutely cherry-picked benchmarks. They do it all the time, and a lot of times they probably also take the best of the best out of like five or ten runs of the benchmark, something like that, just to absolutely make it look the absolute best. But in this case, we're actually talking about upwards of a 50% performance difference. So it's not like if... Uh, Qualcomm releases these chips and then people literally aren't getting anywhere near the performance that they saw that, oh, well, you know, everybody does that. No, that would be a massive issue. Sure, NVIDIA and all of those will cherry pick and things like that, but the performance that they show is typically at least pretty much spot on, maybe a difference between one or so percent here and there, but nothing like 50%. So I highly doubt Qualcomm would make these claims if they weren't true, and obviously time will tell, but I definitely don't think this will end up being true. But of course, like I said, time, as always, will tell. But first, it's time to spice up your gaming setup with custom ear pads from Wicked Cushions. <laughs> okay, this was starting to sound like a pathetic infomercial or something like that, but to be honest, yeah, Wicked Cushions sponsored today's video, but these hybrid fabric with custom cooling gel ear pads are really nice. They're comfortable and they make my setup look that much cooler. Plus, they just pop right on my current headphones in seconds. There's a ton of options to choose from. I went for this retro 90s look, but you can go for something that's more your style. Basically, if you want something to help you stand out from the crowd, check out Wicked Cushions down in the description below. And next up for today, if you've been looking at buying an MSI RX 7000 series GPU, well, you may just be out of luck. This story originally sort of sparked via Hardware Unbox, and it says it right here. Did I miss this story? MSI has been completely removed from AMD's Radeon 7000 series. All existing products have been discontinued, and they never released a 7700 XT slash 7800 XT. This all seems to have happened very quietly. And sure enough, if we look at AMD's own website for their partner graphic specifications, and then we take MSI and the RX 7000 series, you can see that they only have two two GPUs listed. To take things even further, if we go to MSI's site, you can see with their graphics cards, this is their store, you can see that they list tons and tons and tons of GPUs. Some are in stock, a lot aren't, but a lot are. I mean, if we go right over here, there are quite a bit more of these that are in stock, but still a lot of GPUs. But then when we go over to AMD's RX 7000, uh, the 7600 mech, and that's it. Well, it looks like we may now have our answer. In a new story by Hardware Lux, they actually asked MSI about this. And in a response, this is what they got. Quote, when it comes to graphics cards, our focus at the moment is actually more on RTX cards. Nevertheless, the collaboration with AMD is essential and extremely relevant for us. We see a very positive development, particularly in the area of mainboards. So yeah, I'd say that 
pretty much says it, at least for now, they are likely done with AMD GPUs, but of course they are still gonna make AMD motherboards, given especially the popularity of Ryzen, that's not a surprise at all, but at least according to this, it does look like they are done with their GPUs, which at least to me, says that AMD's RX 7000 series is really not selling well at all. And next up, we have a very odd story that I will absolutely say this is something I really want you to take with a grain of salt, but it does at least sound fairly interesting, if not extremely out there. Either way, if we go down here, this originally comes from this Twitter user and later reported by video cards, but basically, according to them, AMD is preparing a new series of Epic CPUs called Epic 4004 series. And get this, according to this, it's actually going to be on AM5 boards. Not only that, but they're gonna offer X3D variants. Say what? So yeah, I really don't know what to think about this one. I haven't heard anything about this. Like I said, it sounds really suspect, but it would be pretty interesting. I will say that Video Cards does mention that it's worth adding that AMD has Ryzen 7000 embedded series on their own special board. So I mean, it may not be as wild as it seems, but obviously servers look for very different things from consumers. So they likely need to make all new motherboards for these, but they've done similar things with their embedded series. So they really may in fact be doing this, but I wouldn't hold my breath. And next we have a massive story. I mean, I think this is such a big deal that I really think uh, reviewers should go back and re-review Intel's 13th and 14th gen i9 CPUs. If you've been following the channel, to which you definitely should, especially if you wanna stay up to date on all of this wild stuff, make sure you subscribe to GamerMelt. But if you have, you know that Intel has been having some major issues for their higher end CPUs. Specifically, we're talking massive stability issues to the point of where it's causing crashes in these games. And I have been discussing this for a little while. Tom's Hardware basically found out that it has a lot to do with the limits or the higher limits on motherboards. Now, like I've said multiple times, I really like to reiterate this. Motherboard vendors have been doing this for quite a while now, and it's never caused these issues because Intel typically has safeguards in their CPUs that don't let power to completely run away with them. But it seems like their 13th and 14th gen CPUs have an issue with this. So I really wouldn't completely put this on motherboard vendors plates, although obviously they are going much higher than what Intel suggests, but at the same time, they've done this before. Anyway, what's wild about this is that we've seen recently that there was this new stability setting added to a Zeus motherboards that ultimately hurt performance. Well, this time we're looking at Gigabyte and things are really bad. As you can see right here, it says Gigabyte has released the Intel baseline profile setting within its BIOS for 13th and 14th gen core CPUs, all in an effort to offer more stability to these CPUs. Well, that stability is coming at a gigantic price. We are talking, you can actually see right up here, Gigabyte Z790 Intel Baseline Profile puts the 13,900KF CPU into the Core i7 tier. We can see it right here with some of the first benchmarks coming out of this, where we see that Gigabyte on auto, the uh, 13,900KF got 40,021 points. Yeah, but then on the baseline, it got 28,800. 111. This is a gigantic loss of performance. And you can also see that there's pretty big dips from auto to baseline in terms of gaming performance. We're talking 301 to 294. That's not a giant difference. Down here, we go from 216 to 201, 209 to 193. 207 to 200. So, I mean, not a giant difference, honestly, comparable to um, a Zeus's update, but at the same time, that is still a difference. 
And it's definitely a gigantic difference when we're talking more professional workloads that use all of these cores. Now, maybe gigabytes is more intense than it absolutely has to be, but at the same time, it really goes to show just how much these CPUs have been boosted basically from the factory when it comes to the motherboards. And more importantly, I really think reviews need to be redone. Simply put, almost all reviewers get some of the highest end motherboards out there, and these are obviously gonna be the main culprits, massively overclocking these CPUs, making everyone think that what we're seeing in terms of performance is what you can expect. Well, if this is true, and especially if you want absolute stability, that's not at all what you can expect. So yeah, once again, I really think reviewers need to redo their Intel CPU reviews. And lastly for today, we have a massive story from the news site HKUPC, where you can see that apparently an official AMD document was recently leaked. And when we look at it, you can see that it has specs for Andy's upcoming Strix and Strix Halo APUs. Don't forget that Strix Halo is that monster APU that's seriously set to destroy even mid-range GPUs. Then the regular Strix point is more or less their normal mobile APUs, who hopefully both of these come to desktop via the G series, though, I don't know, Strix Halo may end up being such a gigantic chip that there's just no way that they can fit it on the AM5 board. Either way, this is some wild stuff. We have pretty much all the specs here. Starting things off with Strix, you can see that it is apparently getting up to 12 cores and 24 threads, and it is based on their next-gen Zen 5 architecture. Then L2 cache, it comes with 12 megabytes, L3, 24 megabytes, and then eight workgroup processors based on RDNA 3.5, workgroup processors, that being 16 CUs. 50 tops of AI performance, definitely looking like a very nice upgrade over last gen. But forget about that because Strix Halo is seriously where it's at. We're talking 16 cores and 32 threads, Zen 5 of course. The L2 cache gets one megabyte per core. The L3 gets 32 megabytes per CCD. And then we are talking up to 20 workgroup processors for 40 CUs, and that is even an upgraded RDNA 3.5. Don't forget that this is seriously way more CPUs than even the desktop 7600 XT, which only has 32 compute units. So a massive jump even from that, and don't forget that it also comes with RDNA 3.5. And lastly, we're looking up to 60 tops of AI performance. Once again, Strix Halo is looking like an absolute monster APU that will pretty much completely decimate just about all mid-range to even mid-high-ish range discrete desktop GPUs. This is really gonna be one interesting APU. So while that does it for today, do you think reviewers should re-review Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPUs? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Wicked Cushions down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.